seen all my life. I wish I had a witness. I ain't never seen that, nothing like that before in all my life. And Sam Cooke was a, was a man who sung without movement at all. This brother stand to the side. I'm a soldier. And he just barely moved. Give God some praise in the house. Amen, amen. God bless him. God bless him. Hey amen. We're going to come down now and uh, uh, extend the right hand of fellowship pr and present the Bibles to our new converts, amen? Church ought to be happy. Come on, give God some praise. Welcome all new converts in the church by the extending of the right hand, by the presentation of the Bible, baptismal certificate, as well as the church covenant. We pray that your parents will teach you the covenant and also will bring you to Sunday school so that you can learn the word of God. Amen. And on this day, we're going to give you Bibles and we want you to bring your Bibles to church every time you come. In fact, keep your Bibles in your heart. Read it. Take out some time and read the Bible. And what you don't understand, ask your parents, and then if you don't understand it further, Sunday school teacher, and then come see me. Amen? Now here's what I want you to do. Turn around. Y'all turn around and face the congregation. Just for one second, let's see if I make a point. Show you how important it is to bring your Bibles to worship. Watch this. Everybody that have their Bibles, lift them up. Look at, look, you see how everything look out there? See, some folk got their Bibles and they got soldiers out there that ain't got no Bible. <laughs> now the Bible, see this Bible is your sword. You fight with this. If you go to war without your Bible, you're gonna be in what? Trouble. Thank you, brother, thank you. <laughs> so everybody out there you see without a Bible, guess what they in? Trouble. Right. <laughs> so you're gonna bring yours so you won't be in what? I had a witness. <laughs> so, and, and we're going to ask, we're going to present the Bibles to you. The uh, Minister Young has one. I think we got three there, and we'll do this by name, but we want to welcome you into the church Amen. with all Amen. the rights and privileges Amen. of those who've been here. Whatever God has upon record for you to do, do it. And brother, we, we need you big time. Yeah. Yeah. Need you to reach the other young men. There's no doubt about that. It's, 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 it's paramount that you tell others about the Lord and that you tell them based on your ability and your understanding of God. It's, uh, how old are you now? Fifteen. Give God some praise. You're at the right age 
to reach some of them. If I tell you the majority of them are in jail, it shouldn't blow your mind. It shouldn't blow the church mind. If I tell you the majority of us are in Angola, that's exactly where we are. And so God didn't save you the rest. He saved you to tell it. As you heard, you heard Brother Green praying for his son. All of us should pray for our children. That God would touch them and change their lives. So we're depending on you to affect change in the world. Amen? All right, so God bless you. We're going to start Sister Maya Wilson. Is that you, sister? Hey, well, God bless you. Amen. You was ready. You were ready, huh, aren't you? <laughs> Amen. Sister Burchelle Lynn Renard. That's you, sister. Amen. Praise God for you. You going to hold this? You going to stick with it, huh? And keep it with you, yeah? Don't leave your Bible home like some of these people doing out there. <laughs> All right. Brother Corin Keelan, that's you? Now this, this is your sword, and a sword is something you fight with. Not the people, but the devil. Let's show you how the devil operates with you. When your parent tell you to do something, and then something tell you don't do it, chances are that's going to be the devil, yeah? Then you, what you do is you look in this Bible, and Jesus said what? That the only person you're supposed to obey is God. And God told you to obey your parents. And if you obey your parents, you'll live a full life. You want to live a full life, don't you? All right, keep your Bible with you and do the right thing. All right. Brother J. Fat, you got a Bible name, so we shouldn't have much trouble with you. <laughs> J. Fat Williams. J. Fit or J. Fat Williams. Amen. And you know to keep it. I know you're going to get it right. <laughs> it's not, now you got nothing else to say. I know you're going to get it right. Believe me. And Brother Michael Green. Amen. 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 Instead, of, instead of it be MJ, it's MG. That's right. Amen. Give God some praise for, for all of them. Amen. Come around and shake their right hand. And, uh, and you know when I said M M G and M J, you know what's amazing? John John King Young, whatever his name is, over that North Korea, is getting sick and weak now. And his son, I'm not gonna try to pronounce his name, but they say that's his son. And what they say about his son is, they say that they don't know what kind of personality he's going to have. But it's amazing how athleticism will impact the worst man in the world. Now the church ought to do that. But they said that John, the one man John Kim Young's son want to see, you would think it would be Jesus. Bit, that would be nice. Yeah, yeah. But guess who you want to see? Michael Jordan. I said, good God about it. So maybe Mike ought to go there and talk to some of them. So give God some praise. Why don't you come and shake that right hand? Now that, give me that right hand, sister. No, no, but there you go. Amen. Bless you. Bless you. Amen. Bless you. Bless you, brother. Thank you, Doctor.
Yes, I am. From all, oh yeah, oh. Ever given on reason, on oh, on yeah, on on ever. Oh, church, I'm a From Oh, you and God bless you and we thank God for these souls and we thank God for this young brother brother D'Angelo amen amen give God some praise for this young man amen well I know you one of the dancers that's why I have to look up so let's give the Lord some praise in the house Until I reach my home, until I reach my home, I don't expect to get a journey over till I reach my home. Until I reach my home, until I reach my home, I don't expect to get a journey over till I reach my home. Oh, Satan's mighty busy. He follows me night and day. And every time I go to pray, he's always there to stay. Lordy, Lordy, until I reach my home. Until I reach my home. I don't expect to get a journey over till I reach my home. Now don't you mind old Satan With all of his tempting charms He wants to steal your soul away And fold you in his arms Lordy, lordy, until I reach my home Until I reach my home I don't expect to get a journey over Till I reach my home when I was lying at that dark door, nobody pitied for me. But Master Jesus, he came riding by, and he bought my liberty. Lordy, Lordy, until I reach my home, until I reach my home. I don't expect to get a journey over till I reach my home. Oh, some say give me silver, others say give me gold, but I say give me Jesus, cause he's precious to my soul. Lordy, Lordy, until I reach my home, until I reach my home, I don't expect to get a journey over until I reach my home. 
a choice to keep our hair on God to glorify and my never dying soul to save and pit it for the sky. Lordy, Lordy, until I reach my home, until I reach my home, I don't expect to get a journey over till I reach my home. The church say amen. Yeah. Don't expect to give the, give the journey over until I reach my home. Amen. Glory to God. From John, John chapter 19. John chapter 19 and verses 32 down to verse 37. When you're there, if you would just say amen. Amen. God bless. Somebody say not yet. John, thank you. Brother Green, thank you. Brother Pierre. John chapter 19. Verse 30 through verse 32, I'm sorry, to verse 37. Amen. And just as soon as our new converts get there, we'll move on. Amen. Amen. All right. And here's, here's what it reads beginning with verse 32. Here's how it reads. Then came the soldiers and broke the legs of the first and of the other, which was crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was dead already, they broke not his legs. But one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side. And forthwith came there out blood <coughs> and water. And he that saw it bear record, and his record is true. And he know it that he said true that ye might believe. For these things were done that the scripture should be fulfilled. A bone of him shall not be broken. And again another scripture said, they shall look on him whom they pierce. If you would look at Revelation chapter 1 and see something of the harmony and validation of scripture. Revelation chapter 1 and verse 7. The old folks say just move to the back of the Bible. Revelation chapter 1 and verse number 7. And we want you to stay in the book of John. We'll be coming back there. Revelation chapter 1 and verse 7. Amen. This is just a beautiful sight. When you're there, if you would just say amen. <clears throat> Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him. And they also which what? Pierced him. All the kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, amen. You know that both passages relate to the piercing. We go now to Joan, back to Joan chapter 19, and, and our subject, thank you so much, our subject this morning is simply this. They pierced him 
in his side. Just simply that. They pierced him in his side. My brothers and sisters, Calvary was a terrible sight. And apart from Jesus shedding his blood, our sins could not be remitted. There must have been the shedding of blood. And only the blood of Jesus could save us. I invite you, I invite your attention to come briefly with us to Calvary. You will find three crosses. A thief on the left, a thief on the right, and as history said, Jesus in the middle. Lest we become arrogant, I would submit to you there was more than three crosses. History said there were three, but if you look close, you'll find that there were four. There was a thief on the right, a thief on the left, Jesus in the midst, and that was our cross. Uh, and as we look, we picture Jesus not on the golden cross that hang about your necks, but on that old rugged cross. Blood was falling down his body. Nails in his wrists. Nails in his feet. When I say nails, I'm not talking about small nails, but spike type nails were driven through our Lord's wrists. Not his hands, because if, if the nails would have been in his hand, the weight of his body would have been a problem for nails in his hand. So we conclude that the nails were in his wrists. And if you have ever had a problem with your wrist, I think they call it corporal tunnel. I believe I got it right. Any problem with your wrist becomes problematic. Nerves begin to go into shock and numbness occur. You have a problem from the computer and a problem from the typewriter, but Jesus had that problem because of the spikes that were driven through his wrist. I see here that much had happened before now. The Bible said at 12 o'clock it had gotten dark. The sun had refused to shine. And yet the S-U-N went out, but the S-O-N was still shining. I believe that if, I don't know about you, but if I had been there and saw that it had gotten dark at noontime, I don't believe I'd have been still hanging around the cross. I think I'd have left. Can I get a witness here? And if I would have stayed, I would have had to have some connection to Jesus. Something about nature going into convulsion and something about the sun refusing to shine would have told me that something bad is going on at Calvary. Not only did the sun refuse to shine, but the earth shook, as the old folks say, like a drunken man. Earth began to quake, and the earth went into an upheaval, and the earth went up into a convulsion, and yet men were still evil darkness and the veil of the temple was torn from top to bottom indicating that man didn't tear it but God must have tore it because it was a 75 foot veil or curtain and God tore it from top to bottom. Didn't tear it just to tear it but he tore it because he wanted us to have free access to the throne. I wish I had a witness in here. Long as that curtain was there, the only one that could go in to the most holy was the priest. But 
when God tore that curtain down, now not only can the priest go in, but the choir member can, I wish I had a witness, can go in and the deacon could go on in, the children could go in because God tore that curtain from top unto bottom. And all of this happened and yet men remain wicked. Many of the disciples had left Jesus. If you feel like your best friend have left you this morning, you're not alone because they left Jesus as well. Those who you put your confidence in will turn on you. I ought to know it. After 40 some years of preaching, folk that you thought were on your side, they'll leave you. And you don't need to be a preacher to find that out. You just need to be somebody. You'll find out that the only friend that will stick with you, everybody say Jesus, he'll be there with you always. That's why I say you can't say always. You know, we say love always, and I'm going to always be there with you, but I ain't no, I don't know nobody. That being there with me always, except Jesus. Not only will folk turn on you, but they'll die and leave you. So they can't be with you always, no matter what. But Jesus will be there with you. I mean, if you've been knowing him for a little while and you've been able to validate that Jesus will stick with you through thick and thin. I see here the evilness of men. And often we hear people saying that they pierce Jesus in the side. But you really don't get the picture until you look at it the way the Bible says it. Can I tell you they did not pierce him to kill him. When they pierced him, he was already dead I wish I had a witness you, you don't feel the power of that listen now when you, when you shoot a man to kill him that's one thing but when you shoot a man that's already dead you're moving into a different kind of mindset Yeah, you ever see some folk fight and, and, they, and, they, and they're fighting and they beat the man to a pulp and they still beat him and you got to take him off. You ever seen that? He was dead. They sent them to check on the three. And the reason being because bodies would, would stay on the cross for days and linger. But they could not let this happen because the Passover was about to happen. And so they got to get rid of these bodies. And so the soldiers went. And when they got there, they, now something strange happened because the first person they got to looked at him. And they took a mallet. And they crushed his leg. It is called crucifragium in Latin terminology. They crushed his leg. In other words, they took the mallet and just broke his legs. The reason why they broke his leg so that they can hasten death. In other words, we need to get him, we need to kill him now. Here's something amazing though, y'all. If history said that Jesus was in the midst or in the middle Something strange happened in the text because the Bible said when they got to the first, they broke his leg. But then the book said, then they went to the other one and broke his legs. Ralph is already on top of it. That means they must have passed up Jesus. You ought to give God some praise. They didn't pass him up by accident. They passed him up by providence. And some folks say, well, maybe Jesus wasn't in the midst. And they, they, here's what some folks say who don't want to acknowledge the providence of God. They say, well, maybe the crosses were in line. Got to, and they said, maybe they got to the other one first. And maybe he wasn't in the midst. But listen to me. A 
as providence would have it, they passed up Jesus and broke the other one's leg. He is something amazing. And then when they came back, brother, and got to Jesus, and looked at him, and something amazing had happened. And these soldiers were not novices. They were not new at this. They knew when one was dead. And they looked and they said, my goodness, he is already dead. I wish I had a witness here. Now watch it. He's already dead. Now, the fact that he was already dead was astonishing to them. Because the others that would be on the cross, Jackson, would, they wouldn't linger there. Insects all over their bodies. But something was different this time. He was dead already. Can I shed some light upon it? He was dead because the others died when their appointment came. Help me here. The others died because of sin. The others died because they took a mallet and crushed their bones and crushed their legs and they went off into uh, shock. They, were, they had already lost a lot of blood. But Jesus died before they could do that for a whole lot of reasons. One, he died before they could do it it's because Jesus died when he got ready. I wish I had a witness up in here. Remember what he said, no man can take my life. He said, I, 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 I lay it down because I've got the power to lay it down and pick it up again. Your neighbor, you're not going to die when you get ready. You're going to die with the Lord. Say unto you, it's time. Your time is up. Don't make a difference how young or how old you are. When God get ready for you to move, you getting out of here. But Jesus died when he got ready. I wish I had a witness. You know what? Let me, let me, let me educate you. Cancer don't kill people. No. AIDS don't kill nobody. Sin kills people. The Bible never said the wedges of cancer is that. <laughs> what it says is the wedges of what? Sin is death. And so Jesus died when he got ready. But here is something awesome. This soldier, history said his name is Longamus. He takes a spear or a lance. Now it is said that this thing could have been at least five feet long. Much like, I guess, a javelin. Right? He takes this sword. He tells the others, he's dead already. You want to know how evil people can be? When a mother takes her daughter, puts her in the oven and walks off, that's evil. When, when parents abort their children, that's evil. When a, when a father abandons his son and children abandon their parents when they get old, that's evil. You can't imagine how evil the world is if God were not involved in the world, if the church were not involved in this world. You think it's bad now. I wish I had a witness. When, when, when a young man can rape a 78 year old woman, that's evil. You look at this world that we're living in and when you see evil every day, when you blow somebody's heads off for tennis shoes, that's evil. 
Our brothers are killing up one another every day, and and we and we are, we, we're vaunting gang violence. And I stop by to tell you that's evil. When when you can rob your neighbor of the stuff that they work for and think nothing of it, that's evil. I wish I had a witness up in here. When the church can worship on a Sunday and see young men heading for burning hell and shout on a Sunday and act like it ain't nothing wrong. I stop by to tell you that's evil. But in spite of all of the evil that I just illustrated to you, when a soldier can take a sword and pierce it into the heart of God, I wish I had a praying witness that's more than evil. I'm talking about God abandonment. He took that sword and stuck Jesus in the side. You got to see how evil it is, Kendall. Jesus was already dead. I wish I had a witness. And it, and it blows my mind that a man can take a sword sticking in the side of our Lord and he's already dead. Wish I had a witness and you know what every time you do that which is contradictory to the word you pierce him in the side also but I'm so glad yeah. Yeah. I know the Lord yeah. it's evil watch it y'all and when they pierced him in the side the Bible is quite clear and out of his side came blood and water. Watch it. Blood and water. When the blood and the water came out, it taught us that Jesus was truly human. Blood and water are natural liquids that flow through our bodies. Was he man? Yes, he was. Watch it. When blood and water came out of his side, the church, better than this, the Lord's Supper and Baptism, theologians say, came forth because the blood symbolizes the Lord's Supper. The water symbolized baptism. Do you see the picture? Pierced him in the side. And now when they pierced him in the side, it was like opening up a door. Blood and the water. Baptism and the Lord's Supper came out of his side. Let's get a little deeper here. When Adam and Eve were in the, when Adam was in the garden, God saw that he was alone. God put him asleep and took a rib. Come on, talk to me now. Out of his side. And then he brought forth his bride. Guess where, guess where Eve came from? Out of Adam's side. Well, when the soldiers stuck Jesus, how many of you know the church came out of his side? You ought to praise God here. Not only did the church come out of his side, but when they opened up his side, I believe that it was equal to the opening up of heaven. Now that the door of heaven is open, I've got a right to go on in there. But let me move on and see what it teaches us about mankind. Number one, apart from Jesus, we are a hopeless people. We will do anything. We are a hopeless people. Apart from Jesus, we will kill one another. We will maim one another. We are hopeless. The soldiers, the military taught us that in the text. He was dead already. And yet they pierced him in the side. I was watching on the TV the other day about gang violence. And the stuff I saw amazed me. I say to every young man here today, stay with the Lord. Don't let nobody tell you that gang violence is the way. Can I tell you this? You don't need to join the crip, the blood. The only blood you need 
is the blood of Jesus. Hopeless. I see, secondly, the heinousness of wicked men. What will they do? There is no limit. There is no end to what they will do. If you can take a sword out and stick a man that's already dead. In church, Jesus was more than a man. He was God in the flesh. That's evil. The third thing I see here is the harmony of the scripture. Remember, the Bible said it was not to break a bone in his body. It had already been prophesied through the Passover lamb that not a bone of him could be broken. You say, well, how, why did they pass him up? Because the Bible had already said not a bone could be broken. They could not break the scripture because God would not have it so. That's number one. Not a bone of him could be broken. And secondly, God was in it from beginning unto end. And can I tell you today, nothing will happen to you that God does not want to happen. How many of you are depressed? How many of you are going through trouble now? Don't, don't worry about it. Just lean and depend on God. You know this. God had never promised you that everything would be easy. There's nothing in the Bible where God said he'd put you out on a picnic and everything would be fine. He promised us what? Trials? Come on, talk to me. And tribulation. It always amazed me. People just remember the, the good stuff that God promised. You know, people, they quote it all the time. But nobody never said he promised us trials and tribulation. Because only through trials and tribulation do we get close to God. I wish I had a witness. When the sun was shining in your life, you were up on a high horse. But when your burdens got heavy, that's when you really got close to God. When the doctor gives you troubling news, that's when you grab a hold of God's hand. Long as the sun is shining, you're jogging on the levee, you're riding in your car. But when the storm of life are raging, that's when you get on your knees. I wish I had some folk in here who witness it. And soon as the storm is over, we're back on the four wheels again. And like a spare tire, we throw God back into the trunk. And then I see the humility of Jesus. How humble he was. He could have gotten off of that cross. He could have spoke one word and destroyed the world. Brothers, let me say something to you again. The ability to restrain your power is the greatest power in the world. Watch what I mean now. Jesus could have destroyed the world with one word. But because he had power over his power. I'm saved because of that power. Can I tell you because you can beat somebody up. It's not the, if it's not the right thing to do. Then you ought not do it. If you got power over your temper, I mean, if you got temper problems, uh, help me right up in there. If you can get power over your temper, it's greater than a man that has power over a whole city. You know what happens when folk get angry? They go to saying stuff that's not in the Bible because they lost their temper. But I'm saying to you, Jesus had power over his power. And then again, I see the hatred of Jesus. They hated him so much until while he was dead, they stopped him again. You say, well, pastor, why did they hate Jesus so much? Can I tell you, the closer you get to Jesus, the more no good you find out how you truly are. If you compare yourself to Johnson, that's not a good comparison because Johnson has got some mess that he got to deal with too. If you compare yourself to Peer, you can look good about yourself. But soon as you put yourself on the side of Jesus, all of a sudden, you find out that I'm nobody just trying to tell the world about somebody. I wish I had a witness. 
How many of you have gotten close enough to the Lord to realize how good he truly is? I look at folk in the church and it disturbs me sometimes. People come to the church like Cab Calloway, half fried died and laid to the side. But if God had been good to you, you ought to give God some praise. This ain't no place for you to look good. You didn't come here to sit down and watch a fashion show. You are here to give God praise. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I don't know what you come to do, but I've got to give God some praise. Have our witness in here, and then again, it taught us something about the humanity of our Lord. Blood and water came down from his body. I'm glad that the blood came down, Sister Green. The blood that came from Jesus washed all my sins away. I found out if Jesus had not shed his blood, I'd be in a mess. But oh, I'm glad, are you glad today that the blood of the Lord have saved my soul? Can I tell you, as I'm almost ready to close now, that I don't know about you, but I'm on my way to heaven. Can I get some witnesses here? Don't know why you heading that, but I'm on my way to heaven, not because of Johnson, but only because of Jesus. Have I witnessed in here? But one thing about it, when I get to heaven, I tell you what I'm going to see. I'm waiting for 41 years. I feel my help coming now. For 41 years years I've been preaching this thing but when I get to heaven I'm gonna see it for myself when I walk up to Jesus I'll see the hole in his wrist oh Lord you know he could have healed the hole but now push stay there now you know he could have healed the hole but when Jesus went back to heaven, he went back with holes in his wrist, with holes in his feet, with holes in his side, so that when I get to heaven, I'm going to join that choir. I'm going to sing worthy. You know the heaven song. Worthy. Worthy is the Lamb of God. Come on, if you know he died for you, don't fool me. Get up on your feet and say thank you, Lord, for dying for me. The old preacher said, God, all right. Can't wait to get up there to praise God. Can I get a witness? I know he died. One Friday, he stayed in the grave all Saturday, all Saturday night. But tell your neighbor, Ali. Come on, shout Ali. Ali. He got up from the grave. Look what the words were, Jackson. All power is in my hand. on and praise praise the Lord they pierced him in the side lest somebody ever tell you again that they pierced him to kill him tell him they're dead wrong they pierced him when he was dead already how evil Y'all was your, your mind straight from the academia. How evil can that be? He's already dead. 
and they take a sword and they pierce him. And he, all of that the Lord went through for you and I. And you know, it, it, it amazed me. People just, they'll come to worship with no sense of how good God is. Oh, man, people just waiting on somebody to ignite their praise. I wish I had a witness in here. Oh, they, they sit down and wait and help me praise the Lord push me. But if you only just think about his goodness, you will praise him. You will get out of yourself. You wouldn't even care what your neighbor did. Can I get a witness this grain? It wouldn't matter what your neighbor did because you know what the Lord had done for you. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when they crucified Find my Lord. Oh, sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. And were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when they nailed him to the cross? Were you there when they nailed him to the cross? Oh, sometimes it causes me to tremble. Tremble, tremble, and were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when? Got up from the grave. Were you there when he got up from the grave? To tremble, 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 and were you there when he got up from the grave? The doors of the church are open. If you're already saved, will you remain seated? But if you're seeking a relationship with God, we ask you to come. By letter, Christian experience of my baptism, will you come? If you're seeking a relationship with the Lord. Remember how much he loved us in that he gave himself for us there upon the honor's cross. If you're there, why don't you come? Uh, 
bless you, God bless you. Tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Causing me. You ever get to shaking all over when you think about him? When your burden get heavy, just think about Jesus. It'll make you tremble. It'll make you tremble. Oh, oh, oh yeah. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. 